All right, so the uh, Tesla Model 3 manual, car manual, has leaked, and I'm going to be going over some of the things I have noticed inside the manual, doing a quick overview, um, trying to keep it a little over 10 minutes, just so um, it doesn't get boring here. So uh, right off the bat, um, it'll go over the interior overview and the exterior overview. So in the interior, uh, a few things I noticed that were interesting. Um, of course, it's a very interesting interior. I'm sure most of you have already seen it. Uh, Doug has already reviewed it. All right, so let's see. One of the things I did notice um, that's very interesting that I have never noticed before is there is actually an interior cabin camera, uh, which we'll get later on page 54. Uh, I'll go. Th I'll skip through some of the basic stuff to make this quick, but um, some other things that are interesting. The hazard lights are up uh, up on the ceiling, on the roof of the car, so uh, it's uh, required to be a physical button. So instead of cluttering the dash, you know they moved it up there, which is nice. Um, then your manual door releases, all that fun stuff. Brake pedal, uh, the buttons on the steering wheel, and the glove box. Then on the exterior of the car, some noticed uh, noted things. There is the uh, driver assistant camera for autopilot. So there's uh, on the side here, um, then on the pillars, and on the front windshield here. Um, there is also radar underneath the bumper on the front, and the uh, towing cover for towing equipment, and uh, some other stuff that I found. And uh, on the back, you have your rear view camera. And just, uh, you know, other stuff that's on every other car on the market. Uh, so next is just going to go over the touch screen. You know, over here on one is this car status. Then two is uh, shortcuts. Um, swipe over for your windshield wipers. And then controls on the bottom. Uh, three right here is uh, to access all controls. And then four is climate. Five music. Six is your phone. And seven is volume. And then uh, nine is uh, dynamic, so you can you know, do change that there. So on the Tesla Model 3, there are two keys. You can use your smartphone with the app, which is the preferred method. Works much quicker. Just uh, having the app on your phone and your phone in your pocket with Bluetooth on, I believe, is what it's, is required. Uh, you just walk up to the car, and it unlocks. Uh, you can open the trunk and wherever, what, whatever part of the car, having your phone in your pocket will unlock any part of it. Um, and then there's the key card, which is kind of a backup or a uh, valet type situation or lending your car to a friend. So with the card, uh, to access the car, you got to put it on the pillar, the card on the pillar, which will unlock it. And then once you get inside the car... Um, it'll tell you on the screen to put it between the center console and the cup holders. So you'll set it there, and then you'll be able to start the car and be on your way. So that's basically an overview of the keys. Um, then there is the doors. So the doors are electronic. You'll press this button on the handle on the interior. And if there's an issue where the electronic... Uh, doors are not working or the battery is dead. There's a manual release on the two front doors and you'll pull this up uh, And right here it's saying note there the rear doors are not equipped with a manual door release But you know if there's really an emergency or something um, They'll be able to go through the front doors um, Then there's the uh, exterior door handles so you push it in on the uh, Part that's a little longer or taller here, and then this front part will pop uh, out and then you'll grab onto it and pull the door open let's see so yeah and then it's just gonna go over uh, you know the systems for child protection and then uh, making the car lock by itself whenever you put the car into gear and then whenever you park it having the doors unlock that's all controlled through the touch screen um, then you got your windows controls like every other car rear trunk three different ways to open it you will you can use the touch screen you can use the mobile app or you can use uh, truck uh, trunks button, so you can just like you know every other car out there, you got the little uh, really uh, latch right there to release it. And on the front trunk, you actually have two different ways of opening it: the touch screen or the app. And since this car is aluminum, uh, you can't just slam the hood down because it doesn't have enough weight. Uh, you have to uh, right here; it's going to give you a guide of where to push down on. So these two green air, uh, two green 
highlighted areas, you'll take your uh, hands and push down to latch it using steady pressure. Uh, then the emergency release, and here is uh, opening the uh, opening with no power. So in the unlikely event that the Model 3 has no 12 volt power, you'll be able to open the front trunk using the touch screen or mobile app. To open the front trunk in this situation, you'll uh, you'll use um, little uh, power tabs here. It looks like to uh, release the hood, which is uh, quick to uh, then jump start the 12 volt battery it, that's an underneath the uh, uh, maintenance panel inside the front. Uh, then you have your glove box which is opened through the touch screen center console with uh, a decent amount of storage a very a very good amount of storage then you have USB ports to connect your phone to the media system and charge the phone events on the back with USB ports for the back seat um, then you have the cent rear center console area, just an armrest and some cup holders, which is nice. Um, and in the back seat, you have the coat hanger for hanging up whatever you got to hang up. Um, and then this just goes over seats. So adjusting the front seats here, get a really nice uh, power adjustment and the rear folding seats. So it is a split rear seat and you got to have headrest for the third row. Continuing on, just uh, adjusting the head. This is for adjusting the uh, center headrest. Uh, seatbelt warnings. Always wear your seatbelt, people. It saved my life. I almost, I could have died without mine. Just a quick uh, little note to put out there. Um, yeah, this is just going to go over that. Then the pre pretensioner part of the airbag uh, uh, system. So in the event of a crash, you know, the seatbelt will tension up and then kind of let loose and conjunct it work it works with the airbag I won't go in depth with that but it's very interesting from an engineering standpoint um, then you have how to safely put down child seats so there is only hooks for the two back seats not the center one and then there is child latches for all three rear seats so the rear anchor points um, moving on there's then the location of airbags, so there's the side curtain airbags, um, then side airbags for the for two front pa passengers, uh, front driver airbag, front passenger airbag, and then which is nice, something nice that I didn't realize they included is knee airbags, um, so they also have those as well, and we'll go in depth here, and remember I'm not going to go through this, but I'll link it down below so you can get more detailed information. Then you have the buttons on the steering wheel and what their function is. So you can use, uh, whenever just listening to music, you can use the left scroll button to control the volume. You roll it up and down to increase and decrease volume. And you'll press it in to mute it. And then I believe going side to side will skip to the next or go to the previous uh, radio frequency song or station. And then, of course, horn. Right, uh, right in the middle, you just press that down. And then those two scroll wheels can be used for other things. So whenever you're adjusting the mirrors or the steering wheel, you can also use those wheels. It'll prompt you on the screen to do so. Uh, again, with the uh, key card and how to start with that. Uh, shifting gears, uh, down for drive, uh, going twice down for drive, um, going twice up for reverse and once down or once up will put you in neutral and then pressing in on this button right here will put you in park. Um, just an overview of all the warning lights and information lights, ABS, airbag, uh, electronic stability control, vehicle hold, all that uh, awesome stuff. Then you have your driver status. Something interesting to note here is this green bar right here. Um, Green represents energy being used, and red, it, red indicates energy being gained by regenerative braking. So that is actually interesting. I think I thought it would be the other way around, but I um, guess they changed it. Um, so there's that, just the driver information, you know, just like autopilot on the other. It'll give you the information about the cars in front of you, lane markings, and all that. Then there is the control for the lights. So you got auto headlights, auto dome lights, 
yeah, all that stuff. Interior dome lights, you just tap on the lights themselves and they'll turn on and turn off. Um, now the left stock will be uh, high beams and directionals and windshield wipers. So uh, pushing it away from you will turn on the high beams, pulling it towards you, will, you can, you'll be able to turn them off or flash them. Um, up and down is directionals and then pressing this button on the end uh, lightly will enable just a quick wipe of the windshield or pressing it deep will clean the windshield and anytime you press that in the uh, the screen will show the windshield wiper controls right here on the below the driver uh, status area um, hazard light flashers up on the roof like I noted earlier you have the windshield washer then you have the braking system ABS emergency braking brake wear regenerative braking just going through all that information Traction control, there's, so there is traction control in this car, and uh, yep. and then the parking assist, so it shows all of the uh, radar sensors here. Continuing on, uh, this section of the Model 3 manual will give you, will show you how to get the maximum range of your Model 3, so this is very helpful. Um, let's see. Sorry, I thought, I thought I missed something there. Um, so here's the cabin camera that I noted earlier. Um, so right now it says, Model 3 is equipped with a camera in the cabin. The camera is not currently active, but might be used for potential fu future features which could be added to the Model 3 with a software release. So what I find interesting about this actually is, um, a while back somebody requested that, you know, there's a bunch of cameras on my Tesla Model X. Um, could I use, could they be used as a dash cam and then Elon replied saying, yeah, that's future future um, software release or update coming. I don't quote me on that. But um, so my thought on this is this will be used as part of the dash camera system to monitor the interior. So instead of, you know, using every single camera, you'll use this one to get a overview of the cabin and kind of out the windows. And then maybe the back of camera and the front, you know, whatever. But um, that's an awesome feature if that's what happen, ends up happening. Um, then there's the driver assistant components. So the rear view camera on the back right here. Um, then all the little dots on the back bumper and front bumper are the radar sensor, uh, sonar, let me see, uh, ultrasonic. That's the word I was looking for there. Uh, then there's cameras on each pillar and then on each front fender and on the windshield for three different cameras for autopilot. And six is a radar. So that is used for, of course, um, autopilot. Moving on, this is just going to go over the driver assistant features. So you got lane assist, collision avoidance, speed assist, auto high beam, traffic aware cruise control, auto steer, auto lane change, and auto park. And there's a calibration of 20 to 25 miles. And uh, it goes over limitations here. Continuing on. Traffic where this is just gonna show you how to do it. Enable it. We'll move on. Don't wanna bore you here. Uh, using summon, so this does have summon, which is good. The model three does have summon. Um and then this is going to go over the controls. So you'll touch the car in the bottom left corner to open up all the settings. You got quick controls, lights, locks, display, driving, autopilot, safety and security, and service. And controls and settings. Then you got your climate controls. So, you know, basics, you can set the temperature and have you have auto. And to adjust these uh, non-existent vents, which are more uh, digitally controlled, which is very nice because then you can set it how you want and it'll remember it. Um, you just drag it uh, using the touch screen and you, you can direct the air or you can split it so it feels like it's coming from two different vents, which is nice. Very advanced engineering. It's incredible. And it takes up a lot less space. And then you have your media audio, phone, apps and navigation, security system, which, uh, you know, Nothing fancy. I wish they'd do something more fancy than what is on the car right now because it's kind of like every other car that, you know, doesn't get anybody's attention. But what you going to do? Homelink. Then it goes over software updates. And very interestingly, 
high voltage comp uh, high voltage components. So uh, you have your AC compressor up front, then the cabin heater, high voltage battery, um, high voltage battery service panel in the back here, then the rear motor, and high voltage cabling, so all orange, and then charging port. And what I like about this is it's actually not as many components as I thought. It's very, it, it seems like a lot less failure points than what I was imagining, you know, and it, it, it reassures me that these are actually very safe. Then it goes over uh, the electric vehicle components, battery information, and how to charge it, you know, the simple stuff. It goes over the charging screen. And, yeah, just going over maintenance now. So tires, you know, typical car stuff that you got to spend money to replace. Uh, it looks like Tesla does spell, uh, sell a tire repair kit, which is nice. And then this is goes over cleaning, so cleaning each individual individual component um, and how to best do it, which I love because, you know, my Honda Civic, <laughs> what I got doesn't have anything that shows me how to clean it to its best um, wiper blades. So with this car, um, the wiper blades, you cannot lift them up whenever they are at their lowest position out of the way because they are below the lid, uh, they're below the front hood so uh, in order to gain access to them to swap out the blades uh, you got to go to the touch screen and just enable the uh, service mode for the wipers not a big deal but pretty interesting it's a very nice design to have them out of the way um, there's the wiper jets on the blades um, then you have the maintenance panel inside the frunk like I said earlier and this is how you'll be able to gain access to your washer fluid and uh, the 12 volt batteries under there then the jacking procedure, just like every other car, in all four corners, in between the tires. Um, VIN number, and then there's also the VIN number inside the door. Loading capacity labeling, tire information, all inside the door like every other uh, car. And then here's the dimensioning, uh, dimensions and weight. So this is just uh, going over all that. Uh, leg room and headroom, showing you all exact measurements. It shows you the motor, transmission, single speed fixed gear, which is awesome. No, no transmission to fail. And then it just shows you how to understand tire markings. And then here is uh, how to uh, transport the Model Three. So actually, you will be required to have all four tires off the ground um, unless other method uh, other methods are specified by Tesla but it does require that you have all four tires off the ground um, and there is the uh, towing uh, hook right there that you can screw in and that is how to uh, charge up the battery removing that service cover and also uh, the cabin air intake I believe the filter is in there uh, and there's an event data recorder which is also interesting so you know if there's a crash or something it'll give you information on that and that is basically the end of the manual so uh, I hope this video was helpful for you guys and um, leave any comments if you are excited if you're if you're getting the car I mean this is awesome I want one bad but you know Still in high school, so, and I, I'm going to drive my car as long as I can, so, uh, thanks guys for watching, bye.